Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for all for being here, all the delegates, all the good friends, all the guests that you have come from long sides of Europe to be with us today. Thank you, Tishak. Thank you, dear Andy. And through you to the Irish people for their warm, kind, generous, and friendly reception that they have made to all of us here in this fantastic city of Dublin. I, for more than 10 years, I have had the privilege of being at the service of this party and its member parties. And I feel very lucky to have been part of the evolution of our party, of our group, of our think tank, and of our entire political family. We began as a modest organization. Today, not only we are more ambitious, we are a solid, proactive, pan-European party working at the service of the European citizens. Because we believe in people, every day we translate the concerns of the people into political action. We facilitate dialogue between our parties and the policymakers, aspiring at the creation of greater opportunities. The work we have done in the last years is unprecedented. With the most devastating crisis going on, we did not step back. We did what we had to do, and we did it together. I'm as proud of our staff as I am of the leaders that gather for our summits, of our voters, affiliates, and our people. The road has been difficult, many times bumpy. We made friends and partners along the way. All our international guests coming from different corners of the world made us proud. But we have also encountered harsh opponents, opponents that have intellectually challenged and often defeated in European, national, and local elections. The European elections are a bit more than two months away from now. And you, politicians, us politicians, we know how we politicians are. Every time elections approach, we say that this time is different, crucial, and historic. Will you believe me if I tell you that now is the next European elections will be different, crucial, and historic? You will, because we all know what is at stake. DPP always fought to have a campaign spearheaded by presidential candidates. This is part of the heritage of Wilfred Martins. But unlike other political families, we are not engaged in personalistic shows. We leave this petty satisfaction to those who enjoy them. Our real goal has been to offer European citizens political alternatives, positive ideas, and concrete programs. Others seem to have interpreted this as an ego parade in which promises were made but they easily forgotten and contradicted. But this is not about ego vitals. In DPP, we put a real and transparent and honest debate on our candidates. So that's why I want to thank both of them, Michel Barnier and Jean-Claude Juncker, to all our candidates here that are the candidates of DPP. Thank you for taking the lead in this democratic debate, for offering your outstanding political experience and your commitment for allowing us to offer once again the best alternatives to our voters. Dear friends, DPP is setting its sights on one more than an electoral victory. DPP is also setting its sights on a political victory. And what does this imply? First, we cannot rest on our laurels. Our political family has a great responsibility today, but we cannot just sit still and hope that this stays the same. We have to work harder and smarter in order to deserve to be, once again, the largest political party in Europe. Bringing a solid victory to our political family will not be an easy task, neither for us nor for the rest of our traditional political opponents. This time is different because these times are different. Citizens are discouraged and frustrated. This has been extremely tough years years in which exceptional measures had to be implemented. For the EPP, this required a long-time vision and great political courage, the courage of leaders 
like Mariano Rajoy, like Pedro Pasos Coelho, like Licos Anastasiades, like Antoni Samaras, that they have felt responsibility to correct the mismanagement of the socialist governments of the past. Governments that just brought thought of the short term, that borrowed and spent recklessly, that suffocated the private sector and strung job creation. The socialist government were the iceberg that the European vote hit. And now the same parties want to give us lessons on how to get out of the crisis. Europe needs DPP and we have to rise to the occasion. We cannot afford to have a European Parliament weakened by populist nonsense. And we cannot have a politician with no or poor executive experience at the head of the European Commission. The EPP is a party committed to action, a party that can be trusted, a party with a clear program, with a clear plan, a party with the guts to do the job that needs to be done where it has to be done. I wish to especially thank all the Secretary Generals, many of them who are today with us, Tom Curran, Maria Dolores de Cospedal, Peter Tauber, and all my good colleagues, that they will be in the charge of these future campaigns. Thank you all for your work. We know it's a huge responsibility, and believe me, it is appreciated. And I also would like to express my gratitude to two distinguished EPP politicians, Herman Van Rompuy and José Manuel Durao Barroso. It was here in Dublin that Durao Barroso was promoted for the first time in 2004 as our candidate from the EPP. Dear commissioners, dear prime ministers, dear colleagues from the European Parliament. We had the courage to do what had to be done. Let's now have the courage to go out there and defend it. It would be a, a historical mistake to ruin all the reformist efforts to take a step back now that we are so close to bridging and at last these troubled waters. We are ready for the challenge. In these last five, 50 years of history, the EPP had the responsibility to lead Europe in crucial times. DPP prepared the way to EU enlargement. Unlike other political families, we don't have dictators sitting on our internationals. We do not justify the suffering of our Cuban friends. We do not bail the cry of freedom from our friends from Venezuela. Martin Schulz. I don't know if this was acting as president of the parliament or as a socialist candidate. And maybe he's a little confused himself also. But while Martin Schulz was signing agreements with the party of the regions of Yanukovych, we supported the liberation of our Ukrainian freedom friends from Ukraine, like the courageous Julia Timoshenko. And while others speak of just social justice and rights, but say nothing, of how this can be advanced, we offer a clear vision of future, a vision based on our capacity to reform our economies in order to create jobs and achieve sustainable growth. We have a plan, a navigating plan, we have the sailors, and together we will choose today the best captain. Let's go out there and tell European citizens we deserve your tr trust so thank you, everybody. And now, I would like to make a little pause. Forget about politics for the next 20 minutes. I'm finished with the political speech. Ladies and gentlemen, generationally, I have the honor and I have the pleasure now to introduce the next speaker, a person that leads, needs little or no introduction. He's a renowned Irishman, a renowned European, and a true citizen of the world. He speaks a language that all of you coming from all over Europe understand, the language of the soul. Believe it or not, he spent with me, with you, and with millions of people, some of the most marking moments of our lives. Because he also marked me, I want to say to him, thank you for the unforgettable fire. He believes in people, 
especially in those vulnerable and deprived people. A true artist, a humanist that believes that every one of you sitting also here can make a difference. The voice of a legendary band and the voice of those who don't have one in projects as Data, Product Rec, at one campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, with all of you, Bono. Yeah.